morning superstars. So another dressage explained on its way. I just wanted to say one thing. I did a video last week about collecting the canter and thank you so much for being so honest. I've been reading all of your comments and the overwhelming consensus is, is that you guys understood what I was trying to say, but what I didn't make clear is what the actual button was to change the stride from small to big to normal, from five to four to 10, as an example. So I've been racking my brain all week how I can actually articulate that to you. And what I've done is I've gone and bought this little visor camera that sits on my helmet so that you can see what I'm doing with my hands. And I think I've really worked out how to articulate that to you perfectly. But it's going to require a little bit of clever camera work and um, something I haven't done before. So you need to give me about a week or so to prep that. But I hear you. I understand what you're wanting. And I'm 100% going to make that happen. So I'm really excited. So thank you for being honest. Thank you for telling me what it is you really, really need, which I'm hearing you is not just what collection, collector canner is, not just that it is smaller strides or bigger strides, what the physical button is to change it from four, five or 10 strides. I can articulate that to you and I'm going to. So next week, stay tuned, that's gonna be in there. So Julie S, Julie S has a spectacular question, which is so, so, so common, okay? Basically, she's saying that her horse's quarters come in all the time, and no matter what she does, uses a whip, anything, it just keeps coming back in. Every two or three strides, she needs to remind him to bring his quarters back out again. Now, this is a question that is so common, and it's actually not that, simple, not that difficult to solve. Don't think of it like the quarters are in. The quarters are in are the symptom, not the cause. The cause is lack of shoulder control that the shoulders are out. So watch my shoulders go out. What happens to my quarters? They go in. Equally, if I put my quarters in, my shoulder goes out. You see that? So shoulders or quarters always follow shoulders. So if you want to move anything with the quarters, you move the shoulder. Okay, if you want more of a, a, an angle in a travers, for example, you don't push the quarters more sideways because then the horse would start to droop sideways and not be as upright as, as much. You would push the shoulders a little bit more out, which creates more rib cage bend, which gives you more quarters. Okay, so if your horse is struggling and always has his quarters in, forget about the quarters, move the shoulder. So for your thinking, ride a shoulder in, okay? If you're not at that level yet and you can't move the shoulder, it's not possible yet, you're not at that level, ride a circle and as you ride the circle, push the shoulder in as you turn and for your feeling, you can push the quarters out on the circle but it's like a leg yield, it's not just a correction. So it's like um, a leg yield where you're sweeping the quarters out on the circle while the shoulder stays in, okay? So it's not just a, I'm in travers almost now, right now I'm pushing the quarters into the right direction. It's a gymnastic exercise to get him sitting back on his even legs, okay? So fix the shoulder, that will fix the hind leg. A couple of caveats here. If he's that bad that he's always crooked and like take two, every two or three strides you've got to solve it, don't expect miracles. He's crooked. He's going to be uncomfortable. He's not going to be able to go from zero to 100. So have goals. So for example, first of all, I just want to have one step where I feel the shoulder come in. Then I'm going to drop my reins, give him a pat and give him a rest. Then I'm going to pick him up again and try for two steps, three steps, four steps and build on it. Make sure that you give him rest in between. Those rests don't have to be free walk on a long rein, but it is maybe get off his back let your reins go, give him a pat, and then make a turn again, bring the shoulder in, ask him to come in for a half a step, a half a circle, a letter to a letter, whatever it might be, but build to it being full time, okay? When you get to straight, don't stop there, then play with straight, shoulder in, straight, shoulder four, straight, shoulder four, straight shoulder in, straight shoulder four, straight shoulder in, straight up somewhere in between, putting the outside leg in between the two front legs. Keep maneuvering that shoulder all the time. That will keep him sitting on the hind leg more and not give him the ability to put his quarters in. 
okay? Amazing rule to remember. Anytime you want to solve anything in the hind leg, fix it in the shoulder first. I hope you like that helped. This one's from Equestrian Emily. Now, Emily asks how I keep George fit, how I stop George from getting quite obese because it's quite a normal thing, and how do I exercise him given he's not big enough to ride? And it's a really, really great question, and it can be really difficult. It's very easy with these little mini ponies to go, oh, they're just a mini pony, you know, there's nothing you can do, blah, blah, blah. There really is. Okay, so the first thing I do is I do exercise him. So we long rein him. My groom does a little bit of long reining. I do a bit of long reining. And in fact, at the moment, we're actually teaching him a little bit PF just for fun. But we do long rein him. And that does help. So he does get a little bit of a sweat going and he does actually work. In winter, when he can't go on the field, I actually do put him on the walker and I put him on the walker quite slow, obviously, but I put him on the walker so that he gets that exercise and he moves around. But the biggest thing that we do is we actually take him hacking with our big horses. So when we go with our big horses out hacking, we lead little um, Georgie around with us. And part of that is so that our big horses have company, but second of all, so he's training for my daughter to come hacking with me later. Um, at the moment he doesn't, but sometimes we have to have little shoes made up for him so that he can walk on the driveways and things with no problem. They stick on, they're quite cute really. Um, but we do exercise him. So don't forget, you can exercise little minis just the way you exercise a big horse, you just can't ride them, okay? If you've got stable access, stabling helps them a lot because they can't gorge on the food, slow feeder hay nets, not such great quality hay so they can pick all the time and still and not get fat but so not also get tummy ulcers but exercise 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 don't forget they got little choppy legs so a walk with a hack from you is a fairly big thing a walk on a walker is a fairly big thing a lunge is a fairly big thing just keep them moving keep them walking and take them for a hack with you pony them off the side of your horse if it's a appropriate thing to do i can do that on g can't do that on wessel <laughs> but on g i can or have someone come walking with you and the beauty of a mini is also the person leading them doesn't have to be particular horsey. So your husband or your wife or your friend that might not be horsey can easily come for a walk with you with a mini, get a bit of exercise at the same time. Hope that helps. Okay, so Kat Evans. Kat Evans has a really great question. It's basically about how you use your leg. And she's saying that, you know, when she uses her leg, that often the, the, she uses her spur or her heel and that she's heard about people saying, use your calf muscle. And, but when she uses her calf muscle, she finds it's not precise and it just doesn't work actually. Guys, this is a really, really common question. And I've had a really good thing about how to answer it because it would be really simple just to give you a sort of textbook um, throwaway answer, but it isn't as simple as that. So let me, let me get into that a little bit for you. Basically, and I had to really think about that then because I really want to make sure I get this out right. There's two forms of legs at leg aids in riding, and this is how I think about it, okay? So you have a leg aid that says go forward, but the thing I'd like to really make clear there is it said it reminds a horse to go forward. It doesn't tell the horse to go forward all of the time. Okay, so I'll get back to that, but that's the first aid. And then the second aid is move away from my leg. And actually there's a third as well, which is ignite this certain leg. Okay, so three times or three ways that your legs work. Move forward, go away from it go away off it and use this leg to ignite, okay? So let's look at the first one first. So when your horse travels, walk, trot, canter, we want them to travel by themselves, okay? So we want them to travel in a way that we're not needing to say to them constantly, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. 99% of horses are on the side of we don't want to go. Very, very few are truly overtly forward, okay? So a really good word at world rule of thumb is if you have a lazy horse, you need to use less leg. 
If you have a really forward horse, you need to use more leg. Now that might in your brain go, whoa, what do you mean, Alicia? That does not make sense. Let me explain it. Imagine yourself doing a Grand Prix dressage test. Imagine yourself doing a pirouette. Imagine yourself even doing a simple half pass. How much harder is that if you also have to say, keep trotting, keep cantering, keep going? It's not really possible, is it? So when you've got a lazier horse or a horse that doesn't go, your leg aid needs to be very electric, very sharp, very quick, and very corrective. So it's very much, I put my leg on, you go. If you don't, it's quick, 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 and then I leave you alone. So you only use your leg when he dies off, when he starts to go slow away from you again instead of powering off in front of you. And when he does come against you, you don't hold your leg on or give him a gentle prod. You say very sharply and assertively, so think electric, think annoyance, think quick. You say, no, 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 keep going. No, 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 keep going. And as soon as he responds and goes, you take your leg off and leave him alone. You're just passive. And as soon as he comes back again, no, 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 keep going. No, 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 keep going. You might even need to go for a little canter or a little mini gallop, or not a gallop, but a big canter in the arena when he really does back off to say, no, 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 I, I do mean go. But then when he goes, you leave him alone. And that's what we would call technically in front of our leg. Okay, so that's leg aid one, and that gives you the ability for him to feel that your leg aids are a little electric, that they are a little bit, hey, I'm waiting for you to do something, what are you gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna move away from it, versus you constantly going, go, 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 go. If you've got a horse that is really forward and he's running away from you, the opposite happens. We tend to want to take our legs off and don't touch his sides because if he go, if you touch his sides, he's going to go. Same sort of thing happens in a backward way. If you take your legs off in that moment, they're just bolting off on their forehand. So in those sorts of horses, which I have to say are few and far between, but on those sorts of horses, we need to have our legs in constant contact with the horse just so that he's accepting the leg and that he's not running away from it. And you say to me then, but at least he runs away from it when I put my leg on. If that happens, you can use downward transitions. So where a horse that, um, that doesn't respond to the leg, you might use an upward transition and say, can't I go away? With a horse that runs away, you keep your legs wrapped around him. When he says, I'm gonna bolt away even more, you say, walk transition. If you can't walk transition, you turn a circle until he walks. And every time you feel that he runs away on you, you walk or turn a circle and walk. So again, it's just that corrective thing that says, this is how I want you to behave by yourself all of the time. Okay? So that is the way of going in front of your legs, so to speak, or with you. The next part is that you want them to say leg yield a little bit, that if you put your inside leg on, you want them to move away from it a little bit. Again, the idea is, is that it's quite reactive, that you don't have to support him with your leg, that you say in a little electric way, go off, go off, go off. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And when he goes, you leave him alone. And it doesn't matter if he only goes by himself for a half a step, an eighth of a step, a quarter of a step. But as soon as he then backs off to that, over, that sideways motion, you go again, again, again. For a horse that is even forward moving, it's the same thing. The idea is, is that the horse is almost in self-balance with your leg so that you're not needing to prop him up with your leg or hold him with your leg. Your leg should be passive and then come in. Passive and then come in. Passive and then come in in a reactive, corrective way, not constant, okay? The last section of your leg is when you say you want to do maybe a flying change or a walk to canter or even a canter or a trot, for example. So you're in walk, you need to say trot, 
Sure, your seat's involved, but with your legs, it's two legs, trot. Then your legs go passive again. For canter, your outside leg goes behind the girth and says, canter, but one, one. As that outside hind leg comes through, once, boom, boom. Not hold, okay? I hope that made sense to you. I hope that helped. The answer is make it electric, make it quick. Make it that you're saying, I want you to go here, good boy. I want you to go here, good boy. Hope that helps. So thank you so much for this, guys. I've really, really enjoyed it. I love talking to you. I love answering your questions. Please keep them coming. Comment below any further questions. And remember, guys, subscribe. The more you subscribe, the more I can do these videos and the bigger we can get. And I really, really, really do want to pay that person to ride for an entire year and learn. I'm so passionate about that and I truly, truly believe that we can make it happen. Okay, so please subscribe. It helps me and you so, so, so much to all of us reach our riding dreams. I will speak to you Wednesday for OTT and Thursday for suppling exercises, Friday OTT again. Bye. Mwah!